Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about the early signs of a major pattern change that's going to be taking place in January. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I figure we start off and I kind of kind of stick you to take a step back and kind of figure out where we've been and kind of where we're going so here's the overall temperature anomalies and how december is basically going to play out and we kind of have a rebound from november to december where we had a rebound of above normal temperatures of about two to four degrees for much of the united states and we're going to end about two and a half degrees above normal but you got to remember in november this is coming off a the 10th coldest november since 1981 and we had much of two to four from six to seven degrees below normal in the central and eastern part of the united states and overall we were two degrees below normal so it kind of balanced itself out with december but in october we had those well below normal temperatures out in the western part of the united states with above average temperatures in the southeast and we still ended one degrees below normal so if you expand the view and look at the entire year, we can see 60 to 70% of the entire country is going to end below normal temperatures with some of the Southeast, Southern and Southeastern part of the United States ending two to three degrees above normal to, to come to an average mean of about a half a degree below normal. So this would, this is the actual average low temperature and the average high temperature and you kind of balance that out and average over the 365 days and we're going to end below normal as far as the united states for 2019. so if we expand the view now let's talk about temperatures so back in you know alaska has been has seen record high temperatures we've actually had 326 record high temperatures in alaska with only 11 below below uh, record record low temperatures and so over the last two weeks with that blocking pattern, with all the cold air bottled up into Alaska and into Canada, we've seen record low temperatures in Alaska. I know Bettles hit 50, 55 below. The next day they hit 60 below on December 26th and 27th. And that was the coldest temperatures in December, even dating back from the 70s. So, and it was actually in mainly hot springs, 65 below zero was the coldest Alaska temperature since January of 2012. So they have not seen that cold of extreme temperatures in eight years in that part of the United States. And, and if we take it out another frame a, a week from now, that cold core shifts eastward into Greenland. So now we're going to be experiencing 70, those 70 degree below zero temperatures bottled up in Greenland. So we're looking at some sort of We've got to figure out some sort of trigger to release this, this cold air down and into the United States. So I'd be worried if none of this was happening, but we're seeing extremely cold, record cold, if not historic cold temperatures way up in Siberia with 67 below zero in Greenland and Alaska. So we're looking at some sort of trigger to filter it down into the United States. And we're going to have that in January. So if we take a look, and it's going to be a step-down process, it's not going to happen all at once. So if we take a look at the EPO, uh, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, it shows it's been above average, a, 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 you know, a positive for much of December, hence the above average temperatures. But as that second week in January, we're starting to see as it starts to neutralize or even go negative starting into the second week of January. And the, the Western Pacific, also goes neutral to negative and that's why they're going to be uh, below normal as well so if we expand the view i took a snapshot of the uh, the noaa outlook yesterday where they kind of definitely flipped on us where they where they have and they update this every day so this is the six to ten day outlook uh, starting in week two of january we've seen above average temperatures in much of the northeast and above average in the south and but they flipped it yesterday and they took away well the well above average temperatures in the northeast and the south and kind of normalized it and deepened the cold in the western pacific hence the teleconnections of the epo and the, and the wpo 
if we expand the view, you can kind of see this is what it looks like now. They haven't updated it today, but even on the, the eight, to, eight to 14 day outlook, they deepen the cold over the Western part of the United States. They normalize it over the Eastern part, but we're starting to see that blocking starting to happen again in Alaska. They're starting the early signs of it starting in week two of January. Like I said, this is gonna be a step down process. So if we take a look at some of the height anomalies, by week one, next week, we're gonna have a little bit of a tease where we are gonna see some of that colder air starting to filter it in into the United States. And by week two, we see that blocking pattern start to filter it in uh, uh, with Alaska, with so, some of these positive height an anomalies, allowing a little bit more of a, the early signs of a cross polar flow and some of that colder air starting to deepen into the United States. So it might take, it's a step down process. It might take all, all month to, to, to get there, but it, it'll eventually, it'll be below normal temperatures in the Western part of the United States, but then slowly transition into the central and Eastern part and eventually the Southeastern part of the United States. So if we take a look at the, the latest uh, and how we're gonna end on the solar minimum, well, we've been following this, we're basically gonna end 281 days. It's the coldest uh, solar minimum in 100 years. And you can look at some of the, 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 the thermosphere is almost matching back what it was in 2009 now. So if this trend continues, and in 2009, we had the coldest winter in 25 years with well above average snowfall. So. Uh, this is only one element, but this is an important element because this creates that high latitude blocking that you need to pour that cold air into the United States. If we take a look at some of the, the, the water and the sea surface temperatures, we kind of expand the view. We still have well above normal temperatures in Alaska. So this creates that high latitude blocking that you need for that cross polar flow. We've got well above average temperatures in the Eastern Pacific, and we've got well above average temperatures that's filtering in just offshore of the eastern United States. So as these systems come in, they've got plenty of moisture to work with in the Gulf and the eastern part of the United States to tap into that colder air to make more snow eventually as we get deeper into winter. If we take a look at the SOI index, now I follow this religiously on a daily basis. So we've kind of seen it, we, we, we went below, the, the magic number is minus eight of the 90 day moving average. So we were getting some of those double digits uh, SOI drops on a daily, but we had a Western moving typhoon over the next, oh, that's happening right now, that's kind of backed off, backed off on the daily. But if you, if you take a look at uh, in about five or six days now, that, that cyclone is expected to dissipate and then I, I would expect that SOI to drop into double digit dailies further. And a week from now, this will hit that magic sweet spot of a mi minus eight in the 90 day moving average. Now, again, this is a lagging indicator. So I'm thinking by towards the end and the middle to the end of part of January, we're gonna start to see a slow transition from an Enzo neutral phase to a weak Badoki El Nino. And I think this locks in in the heart of winter. So what that basically implies is we're gonna have a lot more moisture to work with off, off the Southwest Ridge, activating the Pacific jet. And this will have a lot more moisture. And with that cross polar flow, that'll combine to give us above average snow amounts in much of the central and Eastern part of the United States. And even the West too. So um, if we expand the view into the, the daily, some of the dailies, and now this is what week two, and this gets really bullish as this step down process. We showed you the blocking, the positive anomalies on the heights by the second week in January. By the 13th, it really kind of locks in and starts to deepen some of that colder air intrusions further south and further east into the part of the United States. So it's mainly cold in the Western part of the United States, but it's a step down process as we go deeper into January. So if we expand the view, and this is from the 23rd to the 28th, and this is the latest, the, the CFS longer range models now showing kind of that blocking really starting to take place, building that Western Ridge with starting to be above normal 
above normal temperatures by then. This will be about a month from now into the western part of the United States, but then creating that cross polar flow into the central and eventually the eastern part of the United States. And if we take it out even further, and this is towards the end of January, starting into February, it deepens it even further. Now we're getting those colder air intrusions all the way down to the coastline of the Gulf of Mexico, filtering into the south and southeast, where much of you guys have been expecting, like, where's winter? <laughs> so I really start to think about it a bit about a, a month from now. So again, again, this is a step down process going into winter. I always talked about it's going to be a late winter, meaning it's going to last well into March. So, and we're going into the coldest time frame of the year, which is typically January 15th to February 15th. So I always had this winter as more of a later winter. So the later it starts, the longer it's going to, going to last. So you only need about four to six weeks to make a really good winter. So once this pattern starts to lock in, it's, probably going to be gangbusters for about a four to six week time frame. So if we take a look at the latest, uh, the CFS over the next 45 days from the middle of January through the middle of February, again, it shows that locking pattern deepening into the United States, filtering in more cold air. So there's, there's a lot of potential on the table for winter. I mean, winter's by far, far from over. We just literally started. So we still got a, what, a good another 90 days left of winter. So this is, so this is a step down process. You just have to be patient if you're looking for winter and colder and snowier weather. So I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and staying with me and definitely share with your friends on uh, social media and subscribe to my channel and catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.